Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. Uh, it's good to have you back. It's been over a year now since we've started to preserve our own meat here on the homestead and do it uh, in an old fashioned kind of way. I mean, we were really looking at how people did it a hundred years ago to preserve meat. Um, what you see here before you is meat that has been preserved. It's still good to eat. Um, and there has never been any cooking of the meat. It's never been refrigerated or frozen. It's, it's this right here is meat that's over a year old and it's still good to eat. This meat here is uh, this stick of meat here is, is about four months old and you know delicious, wonderful. This is delicious. Uh, this is a little bit different. Uh, you don't want to eat this just as it is, and I'll explain that as we go. Um, but this is a year later, over a year later, and the meat is still good to eat. So um, we've had some successes and some failures along the way, so we're going to share that with you today. And uh, if you want to try this going forward, how best you can do it, uh, your own meat preservation uh, yourself. So let's get into it. All right, homesteaders, so what do we got here? This is hard salami. These two are hard salami. This is one of the back straps or capicolas that we preserved last year. And um, this is a little different than this. Uh, this is basically meat that's pre been preserved with salt method and some different... You can watch the video on that. I'll link in the descri description below. Um, but it's a lot. It's very salty. Okay, and so what you would use this for is perfectly preserved. I mean, it's good to eat, um, but what you would use this for is for later on, like during the winter time or any time during the year, really, you can cut this up um, and then use it to soak it and use it to flavor soups, you know, so, but you would need to soak this meat. This is not edible as it is right now. It's very salty. Um, it's got some spices on the outside. Uh, however, um, this is something that you would need to cut up and use and soak to get some of the salt out, draw some of the salt out, and then also uh, use for flavoring uh, for soups and stews and things like that. And that, that's how people did it a hundred years ago. They would take this and soak it to draw the salt out and then use it that way. The hard salami, however, is something you can eat right away. It's good to eat right now. Um, this is a little different than this in a number of ways. Let me first start off by saying it's a smaller diameter uh, intestine. So we use beef intestines. We ordered those from butcherpacker.com. I'll include links for that in, in the description below as well. So if you want to try it, you can. But they allow you to order the, the intestines, or the, what's called beef middles, and uh, this is a smaller diameter than this one. This year we tried to use a larger diameter. I think I'm going to go back to a smaller diameter next year. Um, and the reason is because it caves in. If you don't get a very, if you don't pack it really, really tight, it begins to cave in. And sometimes you can leave some voids in the middle of this, and you don't really want to do that. Chances are it's not going to, it's not going to produce anything that's going to hurt you. But they say that you don't want to leave voids inside the middle of your uh, your salamis just in case mold begins to grow in the middle there. Um, but we've eaten a number of these already, and so far we've, we're fine. We've eaten, I don't know, maybe half a dozen or more. Um, they taste delicious. Anyway, this is also a higher salt content than this one here is. This is about 4% salt, and I may, I've gone back to the original video where we made this, and I made an annotation in the video saying, hey, listen, it's better to use 3%, 2.5%. Uh, your product is going to turn out much better. This is still a very tasty product, but it's it's just a little too high salt content. I mean, if you like salt, salty things, salty snacks, you're going to love it. Um, uh, but I still I, I'm a, I like salty snacks, but this is a lot better. This is about three percent. This is four percent, and it just makes it a little bit more salty tasting. Still delicious, still yummy, tasty. That smoke flavoring is pertinent throughout the whole thing. It's very very tasty, but I just enjoyed the three percent salt content better. And I think next year I may even drop it down to two and a half percent. Uh, this one, because of the higher salt content, it's and it's pure venison. This is pure venison, where the, whereas this one is 50% venison and 50% lamb. Uh, so there's a big difference right there. Uh, 
the venison is a much leaner meat, so it makes it a little bit tougher to cut into once it's dried. Uh, there's no fat content, very little fat content inside this one, whereas this one, there's much more fat content in the lamb um, than there is in this one because it's half lamb, half venison. This one is full venison. And because it's a higher salt content, again, it makes it a little bit tougher to cut into, whereas this one cuts into very easily and is just much more softer you know, as a whole, whereas this one, you could basically club somebody to death with that thing if you wanted to. This could be a weapon of war if you wanted it to be. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, that's really our meat preservation. It turned out really good. You know, I mentioned our failures. Our failures uh, were the venison prosciutto. And I don't really know why it failed. I mean, my best guess is because venison is a very, very lean meat. Um, maybe my, fa- I'm going to try it again probably at some point. Um, but my failure, I, I just, I would chalk it up as a failure. My venison prosciutto video, um, it's back in the archives. You can find it. I'm going to make an annotation to this video so people know, you know, maybe my mistake was that venison number one is a very lean meat. And number two, uh, I think I, I salted my venison prosciutto, uh, a little too long. I kept it, I was going basically by what people have done in the past with pork. And since we don't eat pork on this homestead, uh, I wanted to do it with venison. So how do I do that? I, I basically tried to make my own calculations based off of what people have done with pork. And pork is very high in, in fat content, whereas venison is very, very lean. There's hardly any fat content at all. And so, um, that may have been my mistake. I don't really know for sure, but uh, I'll probably try venison prosciutto again. But if I was going to list a failure in my meat preservation, the prosciutto would be it. It ended up getting tossed out into the woods. <laughs> so, um, but the 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 capicola, you know, the backstrap did fine. Uh, the hard salami did fine, and it's a really cool feeling, folks, to be able to hang that meat in your pantry, no refrigeration, no freezer, no nothing. It just hangs in my house until I'm ready to eat it. There's this could, this could hang indefinitely and nothing will ever, ever hurt it. And it's just a great snack. The kids love eating on these. And um, we always have this if we need to make soup or something, if we want to do a flavorful stew or something like that, that's available. But nothing is ever going to be able to spoil this. It's going to be able to hang forever until I decide to use it. And folks, that is how the pioneers used to preserve their meat and save their meat. Uh, They would take the intestines of the animal they were butchering, they would turn them inside out, they would scrape them clean, and then they would stuff them with the meat that they ground up with their own meat grinders and would have their own spice mixes and salt content uh, to taste, and that's how they would preserve their meat, and that's exactly what we did here on an American homestead. So folks, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. Feel free to try this on their own. I'll link the, the, the videos that we that we made when we were making these things in the description below so you can check them out. And at the end of the video, uh, again, if you like us, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you like this video, please check out this list of amazing folks here. These are our patrons. You can find out more information on them at patreon.com slash an American homestead and all the benefits of becoming a patron. They really are the executive producers of our show and they make, they make all of our videos happen. Uh, Other than that, watch these videos on the left, and we'll see you next time on an American homestead.